Welcome back to Copperhead Customs. Today we are doing something way cool. So stick around to see what it is. Yes, welcome back. So like I said, today we're doing something way cool. As you can see, we're in the car, we're in little Swifty Swift, and it is miserable and rainy and horrible today. And we are driving two hours to go and look at something way, way cool that I'm gonna try and buy. So stick around and I'll see you when we get there. Eternity later. Okay, so we are back at home, and as you've seen, that was, if you don't know what it was, it was a 1955 DeSoto, 
with with a blown 392 Hemi in it. It's a pretty nice car. I don't know how much footage the boss actually got when we were there of it, but you would have seen a little snippet of it. We took it for a test drive, but I forgot to record. But what we're trying to do, we were trying to do some wheeling and dealing and trading and what have you. Now, you know, I won't tell you the fine details of what transpired, but as you can see, we have one of our Pontiacs on the trailer and that will be going there tomorrow and we will be getting the DeSoto and then we'll be taking the Star Chief down as well. So we've done a bit of a trade, uh, barter, whatever you want to call it. So basically, yeah, you don't get the fine details, but he is taking these two possession of these two. I'm taking possession of that one and the rest is our business. So uh, this one's loaded up, ready to go. So at any rate, what happened is after we left there, he then drove here two hours back this way and he's gone over these two cars and we've started them and what have you and he's gone over them and that's, we've come up with a arrangement, deal, whatever you want to call it. So I've, he's left of course and I have since loaded this one onto the trailer, onto our Merc, Mercedes, for those of you it's not a Mercury, it's a Mercedes. So, uh, early in the morning we're going to head off and we're going to drop this one off. And then I think, I think I'll probably bring, I think what I'm thinking is we'll bring the DeSoto back on that trip. And then I'll take this one straight away. We'll come home, unload, load, head off again. I'll try to get it all done in the one day. And that way I'll drive home with an empty trailer because it will probably be night time. I don't know, I'd rather drive home at night empty than loaded. So... That's what we're doing. So now, we've got to do all this picking up and dropping off of cars. And then, I'll take you around the DeSoto properly. And we might go for a little drive. And I'll show you everything about it, with it. And then, I might ask for some feedback of some ideas to do with it. So, that's what we're doing. That's what we've done. So this episode... This episode is going to get good and it may get a little bit rowdy.
Okay, as you can see, we're back home. We've done our first trip. So we've taken the Parisian up there and we have brought the, oh, oh, the DeSoto back. Oh, I love this car. Like I love my other two cars, but I love this car. So we've now got the Star Chief loaded up and we got this, and as you've seen, we took it down the street and back and it's raining. So we've had a garbage bag over that the whole time until I just unloaded it, we took it off and we went down the street and I gave it about, uh, it's raining and wet of course, I've got about a quarter throttle and you've seen the little result from that. <laughs> so, uh, one thing about the motor, 392 Hemi, like I said, now the blower at the moment is underdriven. So uh, basically the crank pulley spins, the crank is spinning and the, the blower is probably spinning equal to or less than so less revolutions of the blower than the crank which means it's not creating a lot of boost at the moment maybe a pound or something you know what i mean uh now the motor's built to have a lot more in it and it has had more in it in the past but that's a nice streetable driver now we can with a probably want to put a variable timing control inside it so that we can retard it on the fly and if we change the top or bottom we change the pulley sizes to make it overdriven uh, we can create anywhere like five to nine pound of boost and that should create probably around 200 250 more horse powers but probably be a little bit horrid to drive on the street and the trans only has a 1900 stool in it basically stock so if we did do that we probably want to put a bigger high stool in it as well but i actually like it as it is for now it will only be if we take it to the drags or something uh the local drags that they have down here for the old gases and stuff that we would might want to do that to drive it around the street it is perfect as is but we'll go around the rest of the car later on probably tomorrow because i have to go and do another load so i'll see you when I get up. Just having a leg stretch. Still not a bad looking old jigger, is it? So we took the wheel spats off to get the straps on. I think I'll miss this one. Definitely think I'll miss this one. I like this one. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, so it is bright and early the next morning. And as you can see, it's been raining all night. Before we get started doing a walk around on the car, I am going to go down to the shed and get my heat gun, extension cord, and we are going to get rid of these stickers because everyone has their own taste and the last owner obviously liked them, but for me, I don't like them. I think they actually, you know, they, I look at them and they're okay, but I just don't like the dice really. And to me, they sort of cheapen the car and if we're going to turn it into a gasser which is something we could do we'll put a big pimped out snake charmer or something written on it on the side there but really blingy but i don't think we're going to do that yet i've got some ideas that i will run past you so anyway enough talking let's head down to the shed okay so we've gone down the shed and got our stuff now what we've done we've just got our heat gun down here We'll see how they come off. They haven't been on very long, so hopefully they come off reasonably easy, but a little bit of heat softens up the glue, making them easier to come off. We've got a little Stanley blade to get rid of these stickers here. Now, personally, I'm not a sticker on car person, so that's, that's half of the thing here. Like I said, everyone has their taste. My taste is I don't like stickers on the cars, on the windows or anything dick how things as though you know they're okay i suppose but it's not my sort of style so they're coming off so we've got the heat gun for that then if we've got this stuff here now this is in australia you get this at bunnings but for overseas you'll have something very similar desolver it is a um citrus base cleaner sticky spot and stain remover now this stuff is excellent to if there's any glue residue from the stickers left you spray a bit of that on quick little wipe and it will take it off and not affect your paint so that's a really nice product that one so with all that said we'll get stuck into it and then we'll have a little bit of a 
look around, as you can see, we've got they're basically brand new American racing wheels on the back and on the front. But we will go over it and in a little bit and I will fill you in on, there's a clue, on some ideas that I have for it. Anyway, enough talk, more action. Well, we've just hit our first snag, but the best thing to do is change and adapt. Is that the saying? Adapt or whatever. We're going to fix it anyway. So what's happened is, straight up, obviously the paint job is very poor quality, and it is just ripped, the, the paint is just ripped straight off the undercoat straight away. Doesn't matter how hot or how cold it gets done, it just rips it off because there's no adhesion from the red top coat to the putty primer, undercoat, whatever you want to call it. So my plan, it's trying to curveball at me because my plan was to keep the red on, just flatten it down a bit, and then I was going to shoot a clear coat with a heap of red pearl in it, and then I would give it straight coats of clear after that. But I was going to put a, a clear coat with red pearl, a lot of red pearl, that would actually give it a nice red metallic, would cover up any burn throughs basically, and then we'd lock it all down. And then the roof, I've got something different that we'll talk about later. So that was what my plan was, was not to have to give this car a full respray. As we sit with this, obviously our red top coat is atrocious and it basically needs to all come off. And even with this, this all has to be feathered now. And I can't do that plan because we're not gonna be able to cover this. So one thing I will say though is, I think that this looks better than this. So I think one of the reasons I didn't like the lettering on it was because this is an old age paint job and these are, these are brand new and crisp. And to me, it doesn't look right. So this now looks like an old patina sign. Even though it's the red is the top coat, the cream is the base. If you look at it, it looks like it's the other way around, that the cream has been put on as the sign writing and is wearing through back to the base. I think that looks a bit like an old age patina sign writing. So my plan is I'm going to do the whole thing, pull all this off, which is going to peel all the paint. Uh, then the dices, of course, are just going to turn into big squares. So we're going to have to get the airbrush out and we're going to airbrush a little bit of like patinaed the dots back in, but it, you know, a little bit sparsely. We'll have the 392 Hemi will look like this. The moon eyes down the bottom, I'm not sure what they're going to do, but we may have to put a bit of airbrushing in on them as well. And then we're going to have these sides that look sign written but patinaed. So that's we're just going to have to leave it at that for now. We may actually come through and burn through the paint a bit more to show a bit more patina through out the body. So it's not what I wanted to do, but like I said, you just adapt with what happens. So that's what we'll do for now. Later on down the track, when we do the car a change up, we'll probably sand all this red off and we will repaint it. We'll repaint it red, of course, but we'll paint it properly. So, bit of a bummer, bit of a kick in the teeth. First up, we haven't even looked at the car properly and we've already come into a bit of a dilemma, but we will make it look cool no matter what. So, let's get back to pulling all the paint off. Okay, so this is where we are at. As you can see, we got the back one. I actually like that. I actually don't mind that. So 
so that's what we've done with the dices so far now we've got to get in there with the scotchy and we'll scotchy a bit of that bring a bit of that brown out as a bit of a rust patch we'll bring some red in so we just got to let that set up a bit more then we'll come in with the airbrush and we'll try to airbrush the dices and the shape of the dice and stuff in a bit better we've got to do that to the little moon eyes down here as well and now hemi we're leaving but this is what i've just gone and done so i've just gone and added this little bit of brown on here and a little bit of a stain there and then i've scotched that back and it's just to give it so we're not going to go stupid on this but it's just to make it all start to work now at this stage we're not going to do the bonnet I don't know about the boot, but we're just going to do a couple, we'll probably do a couple little bits on this body line. We'll do the same, we might do a little bit under the mirror, a little bit under the doors, come off the doors or something. A couple of little stain, little stain lines, you know, a couple of little of a, whatever. Maybe a little bit along here, in a few areas. You can see here we're already burning through, so we might just enhance that burn through by having them in a brown. And just got you them back. And maybe even a tiny little one on this lip. Here, so just on a couple of those lips. Okay. Just to make it a little bit of patina. I think it's going to help. This isn't, this now, this is not the look I was going for originally, alright. But, like I said, we've got to adapt it. So, then we'll have these graphics that look a bit patinery and we'll actually add a bit of patina to the sides and if you want to know what i'm doing to the roof we're not doing it in this episode this episode was meant to be pull the stickers off and go for a drive but it's changing isn't it so this i'm going to do a pretty trick lace work roof nothing like you've seen me do before like pretty pretty flash i'm going to do and it's going to get glossed and pearled and multicolored and all sorts of stuff okay mask lines everywhere so that's my plan for the roof. The roof is going to be shiny, poppy, Mexican lowrider, kind of not quite to that extent. Lace work on the roof. Now we're going to have the sides looking a bit like this with a little bit of patina going on the sides. And then we'll think about the boot and the bonnet later on, whether we were to do lace work on the boot and the bonnet or whether we would just put a bit of patina on. And that's going to have to be the look we go for in this in this go around. A bit further down the track, we'll probably we'll change it up and repaint it or do something different. But like I've said, we've got to adapt to what happened here. And the only way to do it, this is what I'm coming up with. And I just think that putting a little bit of the fake patina brown in a few areas just really emphasises the look of it being a 70s drag car. Okay, so it's like a 1970s drag car, sign written, they're all fading off, you know, because we've got that looking reverse, as in it was creamy coloured signs that are fading off, and then we get a little bit of patina because the paint's going, and I think that, I actually think that kind of will look okay. I think, I seriously think we can get this, I seriously think we can make it look good by the end of the day. And get ourselves out of trouble. So anyway, fingers crossed. The main thing I'm concerned about is this. I think everything else we can get to look good. It's just these dice. Fingers crossed. Let's pull it off.
this is the original side okay and it looks okay yeah the paint as you can see has marks and blemishes and it's look on the roof there it's uh you probably can't tell because of the light but it's it's a bit thin in spots and it's if you look at it it's you know it's dull and it's shiny and it's dull and it's shiny it's very patchy hope you can see it through here it's very patchy and hazy and there's a fair bit of peel but there's not enough paint to actually get rid of the peel so yeah i don't know but this is what we've got this is what we've done i actually think it's turned out pretty good so as we remember the paint peeled off when we pulled the sticker okay so that there is the yellow undercoat showing through but it actually looks like it's reversed it actually looks like that was the sign writing and it's wearing off and that's the red poking back through we lost pieces back to bare metal here oh that's what the in the h there that was a piece that went back to bare metal we lost a lot that went back to bare metal and we were a bit blotchy and we had a lot of red so we actually sprayed yellow type of primer color yellow primer color i think it is we actually put some brown on where the rust was or where the bare metal was then we put the yellow primer a couple of coats of that then we've gone through an airbrushed well we've patinaed then we've gone through an airbrushed the black and repatinaed and i think they look okay the moon eyes we just sort of did a little faint one with the airbrush and just that was another bare metal patch that we've made a rust patch and the 392 hemi we've completely left and you know they're there but now they look like they're fading away and so and then to make that blend better we have added a little bit of brown paint on the top to create a bit of fake looking patina now what i'll probably do later is i'll probably go over the whole car and give the whole car a light well the sides anyway i'll probably but well, i can't do it today but we'll go over the whole thing and give it a light scotch bright to actually dull the rest of the paint off okay i want that to look um see here where we've scotched it all right it's it's dull whereas here it's a little bit shiny so i think we'll dull the whole sides give it a bit of a matty satiny look but that's what we did so we didn't go crazy with doing fake we did a few on the edges up there and like you know they actually don't look too bad a little bit in there and we did some um a little stain water like a water running stain a couple up under the trims door locks so we didn't go crazy on it so that's that's that side now we've got to do the other side then we'll call back so take a look at that yeah the plan is i'm going to do a lace roof but now i'm very scared we do some tests and masking tape only on for half hour will start pulling paint okay so i think i'm going to have to change my plan on my lace roof i can still do a lace roof but i'm going to have to do it a bit differently than what i was planning i was planning on doing a fair few mask lines and stuff i've come up with an idea though that should work and it doesn't matter if anyone says anything if you heat it if you run it cold if you half heat it if you get it really hot nothing is meant the paint is the paint so a bit of masking tape we can take a square of masking tape we can go stick it on the car and in half an hour we can pull it off and it will pull some paint so if we just cruise back around here and if we come up to the dice and if we look closely see that that's my tape can you see it's pulling all that paint off that's this masking tape that's what the masking tape did down here okay so that's solely from the masking tape so i'm very scared to do that to the roof and we do 20 different coats and layers and pearls and and then we pull off our final bit of tape and it rips the red on so theoretically we should be going back to bare metal and that's probably what we'll do when we give it a proper paint job later on we're going to have to take it back to bare metal but for now we're going to do the sides like this 
and then probably next week we're going to do a pretty wicked looking lace roof on top of that for now and then later on maybe a year or six months we will probably when we get sick of that look i'd say we will pull it back to bare metal re-undercoat it properly and reshoot it so anyway i've got to stop talking because i that took me six hours and i've got two hours to do this side because I want to take it to cars and coffee in the morning. So, let's get into it. That's us. Whew. Hey, that was a mission. It's nearly dark, so I thought I pulled it off. So, as you can see, on this side, it didn't pull as much paint. But you can still see it pulled the paint. Okay. Didn't pull as much. It still looks okay. It's not showing it up on camera, but I can still see it here, plain as day. Now, we didn't pull any paint, like back to bare metal paint this time. But we gave the cubes our undercoaty type color then we airbrushed in the tops and we patinaed it all up i think it's okay and on the back here as you can see so now on the camera it's not showing it up as much as it is in real life but it actually looks okay. I don't mind it. I actually don't mind it. I actually like it better than it was. Now we've we did like a a stain off the fuel cap. We ran it along the top here, a bit here. Some this is with the patina. It's a little bit. And now this can come off very easily. Scotch bright boom. 
it's back off. It's very sparse. Now at this stage I haven't done the bonnet, but we did go around and do a little bit on the boot quickly. Now I've run out of time, but what I do want to do, I think, is I want to go around with the Scotch Bright and Scotchy the whole car, I think. Uh, well, we've got to do the roof because we've got to paint it, but I think I want to Scotchy all this and leave it like a bit matte. It will make it look a bit older. We'll see what it looks like tomorrow when I take it out. But there's the other side. As you can see, uh, this side is a bit more prominent. And I don't know. I, I don't mind it. I actually don't mind that at the moment. Uh, if we're going to, for this, I think we're going to go buy some taller front springs and we'll raise the front and make it look a bit more like a gasser. But, um, hey, that went from, here it is. I did not like it with those white stickers at all. I just think it looked strange. So I think we've got out of jail with it. I think I saved it. Like, I really did not expect all the paint to come off. I was just going to pull all the stickers. We'll have it red. And that was it. I was going to do the roof and, like I said, probably shoot some clear coat back over the red to make it pop. Now we've had to change tack. So we've done this, made it look aged, put some patina on to, And I think it sort of, it works better than what it was because now it's old car, old paint job, old sign writing, a little bit of rust coming. So anyway, you're probably struggling with light because it is... Nearly pitch black now. I've got to quickly fire the big girl up and put it away because it's meant to rain again tonight. And then we're going early, early, early for the coffee and cars. I don't know, it's only a small little local local thing. So we'll probably join in a bit then. And then tomorrow we'll go over the rest of the car. I'll pop the bonnet for you and show you the inside. And see how we go. So drop your comments on what I've done. Some of you are going to love it. Some of you will hate it. But we have saved from catastrophe, I think. That's the thing is, it was a catastrophe this morning. So I think we've, uh, we've saved, saved it, haven't we? Well, it's not a catastrophe now. Anyway, I've got to move this car. It's a big day. I just fitted in a six-hour session. On this side, I did it in two hours, I think. So... Uh, yeah, I've been at it since um, 7 o'clock and it's now 6.30 at night so big day out in the sun that's what you get on big jobs so I'll see you tomorrow Okay, well, we've just got back from the cars and coffee this morning and we didn't feel much, a bit stressful, but we'll get into that in a minute. First thing I'm going to show you is that it wasn't clickbait on the title. Here is the American title, dated 2013. And as you can see here, Gas Monkey Garage, Dallas, Texas. So that is... The title, now here's a question for you Americans, what does it mean here, bonded title? Someone can tell me what that means. Bond, Dallas, Texas. But yes, there's the title of the car, and it was owned by Gas Monkey Garage. Now, I don't think they built the car, but they sold it. Now, they didn't sell it with this motor. This motor was put in over here in Australia, 
but in 2013 this was that's when the car was imported to Australia as well and I don't sure what the motor was back then but it was owned by gas monkey garage so it wasn't clickbait anyway I think I need to fill you in on what went on today we didn't record much then because we had a bit of a stressful little drive so uh, we were driving there all nicely about now I'll rewind when we first test drove it when we went up a hill it had a bit of a cough and a splutter like it was running out of petrol and the owner said it was a bit low on petrol it's so going up the hill we thought maybe there's pick up or whatever all good we threw fifty dollars in it on the way home then yesterday when i took it to the shop it's been all good but going up the hill it had another little cough and a splutter and i didn't think a lot of it i just thought maybe it still needs more fuel so today we headed into town which is 30 40 kilometers and it was all good about halfway there it started coughing and spluttering and we had some bang, like carby backfires and it was not happy and i had to like ease off of it started doing it on the straight like just surging around a bit hunting type of thing and then on the little on the inclines it was carrying on more and i just thought well maybe we've just chewed that petrol already so we went straight to the service station when we got there and we threw a hundred dollars in we still didn't fill it but it's it's got a hundred dollars of fuel in it now so that's 55 liters or something so we drove had seen everyone had a cup of coffee then we went to leave i think i flooded it didn't want to start we finally got it fired up stalled at the lights again i think i flooded it again anyway we got it cleared we got off we went running and a couple hundred meters down the load it started coughing and spluttering again on the flats now it's doing it on the flats and basically we had to just limp it we could probably do about 70 80 kilometers an hour just a little bit of throttle if we could try to give it any more it would start carrying on and then we got it there then when we got it onto we've got to go up a stinking hill at home and so going up there it coughed spluttered it was doing the odd it was doing the whole time even at those speeds it was you could hear it but that <laughs> carrying on a little bit and having the odd little backfire through the carby then going on the uphill again it actually coughed spluttered and stopped like ran itself out of petrol nearly i threw it into neutral fired it it reignited whacked it into low and limped it to the top of the hill and it was it wasn't happy and it on the flat it started to come back to good again and we got it home so if anyone has any idea what's going on it's that whatever it's doing to me it's fuel related i think it's doing it more on an uphill so i'm leaning towards first thing i'm going to do is change the fuel filter maybe a weak fuel pump i don't know i think we maybe have a few things happening i'm pretty sure the owner said he was running e10 in it and we've put 91 octane in it so whether it's a bit gunked up from the e10 or whether it's now got better fuel it's running a bit rich or something as well of why it was flooded like uh maybe it's just me or maybe i touched the accelerator and i shouldn't have um but yeah if anyone has any ideas what's going on i'm leaning towards maybe fuel filter fuel pump maybe the cubbies float level maybe i don't know the float level uphill might i don't know anyone has any ideas about that i don't think it's spark related could be the timing out a bit but that wouldn't affect it going uphill so i think it's fuel but any rate there's enough of that so that was a bit of a stressful drive so we didn't get a lot of footage but there's the big girl like i said a 671 and uh, twin hollies on the top and it is the hemi 392 and it's all pretty good under there it needs a bit of a wipe down now it's only got a single pot brake master we may look at something there other than that now it was running oh that's pretty warm it was running at about 90 degrees celsius so i need to convert that to see how hot that was that's that's right around there i think um and the rest of the car will just give you a quick little look the interior is all nice needs a good clean and a vacuum and detail but the seats are all all beautiful 
anyone's in America watching me, see the two little lights? I need a couple of covers for them if anyone knows. But other than that, the interior's all pretty good. It's got an electric steering column, uh, sorry, electric steering rack or something, whatever put in it. Um, disc brake front end, conversion. He's got disc brake rears, yep, disc brake rears. American Racing wheels, 275s on the back. Uh, it's got an aluminium drop tank. It's, not, it's quite a nice car, so we need to put a taco in it, I think. And, um, yeah, so give us some feedback on what you think with the, could be with the motor, whether you use, and whether you like the car, and whether you like us trying to resurrect yesterday. Uh, carnage, but I think it turned out not too bad. Actually, looked pretty good out. I think the boot turned out really nice. Uh, in in the flesh, it actually looks. The camera probably doesn't show it up as good, but in the flesh, it the patina looks pretty pretty good in the flesh. Just looks like it's a little bit weathered. And I think what we're going to do is in the next one we're gonna. I think we're gonna scuff the whole car. And we're probably going to look at doing the roof pretty soon. So I don't know if that will be our next video, but the next video on this car. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to we'll do our lace work roof that I talked about. I think we'll scuff the car. We may put a bit of patina on the bonnet. We'll see. We may put a little bit more around the place. And yeah, and we'll try, hopefully, to get it running 100% again. So anyway... Like I said, drop your comments. With all that said, I'm going to say thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next week.